Well, welcome to North Point. So glad that you guys are joining us today. My name's Kim. And I'm Dina. Hey, I got Dina here with me. I'm so excited. It's always so much fun with Dina. <laughs> okay, so first things first, what do we want people to do? We want to know where are you watching from? Yeah. Where are you? Are you in Fresno? Mm -hmm. Are you out of the country? Yeah. Are you down south? Yeah. We just want to know. Share. Type in right now where you're from so we can say hello. That just makes our world a little bit smaller. Yeah, I love it. I love seeing all the different places. Uh, gosh, we've seen people all over the United States and of course all over the world and it's just phenomenal. It's really cool to think like our little town here in Fresno is like reaching. I know. It's so place. awesome to see people from out of the country mm -hmm. saying hi, mm -hmm. people in Nashville, like yeah. wherever. Yeah. It is so cool yeah. that they are joining service with us. Yeah, absolutely. And so we want to give you some steps before we actually head into service today. Number one, pull out your phones, pull out your phone. Uh -oh. Pull out that phone. Okay, here we go. Pull out okay. the phone. The number is 559-785-0355. Yeah. Yes. Okay, now I want you to save that number as North Point text because this is the perfect number to communicate with us. We yes. have lots of different ways that you can connect with us. So you can actually text the word connect to that number and you're gonna get our online connection card. You can let us know if you have a prayer request. You can let us know if you have a concern, a thought, anything that we mentioned throughout service, just drop it right in there. Drop it right in. Drop it in, let us know what's on your mind and we will be contacting you back. You can also give. You can text to give, did you know that? You know, that is so awesome. It's so easy and we have a QR code. You can scan it. Yeah. Boop. Yeah. Um, personally, I just have mine come straight out of my paycheck. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Lots of ways to give, lots of ways to take care of our tithes, and it's um, such a blessing yeah. to be yeah. able to give. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to begin. I'm going to be honest. The very first time giving, it's a little difficult. It's a little hard to start the practice of doing it. And then once you actually start the discipline and the consistency, the obedience to do it, um, it's, it's, it's a part of what you do. It's a part of your worship. It's a part of the experience, right? Of like trusting God with something that, gosh, this whole world really worships, right? Money. So um, this is the beginning, the very first step. You can text give and the number you want to give right to that number. So if I want to give 20 bucks, I would text give 20 right to that number and 20 bucks. There you go. You Easy. give it to North Point and see how uh, God is just making waves with all that's going on. Uh, here locally, globally, you can be a part of so much that's happening here. In fact, one of the things that's happening here is transformed groups, which have been phenomenal. Phenomenal. I lead an online group and it's just really cool uh, to get the variety of people um, coming together and, and sharing really some personal things, even on Zoom, like some really personal experiences and it's just phenomenal. What about you? I get to lead a table on a Tuesday night of young adults and that has just been a blessing mm -hmm. to just speak into their lives and encourage them and just hear their stories and yeah. see how they're getting in the word more. Um, I hear from all over people that have just loved their group connections and the conversations yeah. that are happening. It has truly been a blessing. Yeah, absolutely. And so you can step in, honestly, you can step into my online group anytime. You can text the word group, again, right to that number, 559-785-0355. Now, if you didn't know, we're on YouTube. You can join us live at 9 and 11. You can always watch back services as well. It's a great way to share. If you've been in service and you're like, something really stood out to me and I really want to share that with a friend or I really want to watch that again, you can watch that back. And then uh, we're also on podcast. You can listen back to the message. And then we've got a brand new podcast called Pathfinder. Nice. Um, it's been really cool to just kind of unpack theology and faith and culture and a lot of those like kind of, let's be honest, kind of tension driven conversations um, that maybe you don't want to broach with friends and family, but you can get a really um, in-depth, in-close view, hearing from our pastors and from leaders um, and from people that have just spent time really um, spending time learning about all these different topics. And so uh, join us there, northpoint.org slash pathfinder. You're going to find information there. And uh, gosh, we are about ready to start service, I think. What do you think? Oh, man. We look forward to seeing you there. We look forward to uh, singing together. Yeah. Let's get our worship on yeah. and thank you for being with us today. We're so glad you're here. Welcome to North Point.
we were all created with a divine beauty deep within our souls. Though in time it can become hidden through layers of brokenness and pain. In this relentless pursuit to find the change and transformation we most deeply long for, we come face to face with our creator. The Lord in his immense grace invites us on a journey towards abundant life, transforming us into his image more and more every day. As we make the conscious decision to offer ourselves in worship, we see the Lord's light invading the darkness, turning our brokenness into something beautiful. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like Him as we are changed into His glorious image.
Your spirit breaking 
Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We don't want to forget to be grateful and to be thankful and to just be full of praise for who you are, for what you do, God. Thank, thank you that you are a good father, that you are a good friend, that you are our savior, that you are the one who was, who is, and who is to come, Lord. We put our hope in you and we choose to put our trust in you today and to give more of ourselves to you today. Lord, we commit to our, our lives to you and we say that we love you. Amen. 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 You may be seated, North Point Church. Good morning. My name is Ronnie, and I am excited to be here with you. I hope that you're excited. You know, we know that this is a big game today, but I got to tell you, every Sunday is Super Bowl Sunday for us because we get to worship God. Uh, you guys sounded really good this morning. Hopefully, when you walked in, you were handed the message outline, and inside there is a connection card. It looks like this, and I encourage you sometime during the service that you would just fill it out. Let us know how we can be praying for you. If you'd like to sign up for something, get connected into the life of the church, you can use your connection card, and then at the end of the service, you can drop that along with your tithes and offerings in the boxes on the exits uh, as you leave here. That'd be great. One of the things we love to do is make sure that everybody gets a... Uh, uh, informed on what's coming on, what's happening at North Point, how we can get plugged into the life of the church. And so we do a thing uh, where we call it church news. On It gets broadcasted to all of our campuses and online. And so sit back for the next couple of minutes and watch church news. Hey, I'm AJ. And I'm Kim. And this is church news. Guys, this Wednesday starts Lent, in case you didn't know that, and we're going to be doing a Bible reading plan on our YouVersion app. Um, you can actually find um, find us on YouVersion as a church. Just head to northpoint.org slash Bible. You can download the app there. And also on that page, you're going to get a quick link right to the Lent study that we're going to be doing. We just ask for you to join us as we just prepare our hearts for Easter. Here at North Point, man, we are committed to families and to kids and helping them meet Jesus um, and especially kids, helping them meet Jesus at their level uh, and understand the way that God views them. We also know that it can be scary to step into something new. So here's the deal. We need more volunteer leaders in our kids' ministry because we want kids to know who Jesus is. Uh, and we think that you would be a perfect fit to serve in our children's ministry. But we know that you may have questions. Uh, there may be parts of that that you feel a little bit nervous about, and we would love to clarify and answer those questions and let you know what it looks like to help serve in kids. So if you want to know more about being a kids volunteer, head to our website. You can go to the kids page uh, at northpoint.org, and you can get connected to get all your questions answered there, right? We are so excited to continue our Transformed Life Groups. Are you in a life group? I am. Awesome. So am I with the Life Group Online. And we want to continue to get those stories of just all the experiences that you're going through. Um, you can send us your email, story at northpoint.org. You can type it out. We'll be in contact with you. We love to tell those stories. We just think there's a huge impact in hearing how people respond to all of life's issues in community with others because there's there's oftentimes we feel uncomfortable we feel fearful or very excited and we want to share all of those experiences with you now if you haven't had a chance to step into group there's still time to do that you can head to our page northpoint.org slash transformed hey guys coming up in a couple saturdays is our next men's breakfast if you have been to a men's breakfast you know that this is a great opportunity for you to get some good food hear some good teaching hang out with your brothers, and uh, be in community with each other. If you've never been to a men's breakfast before, you're going to want to come to men's breakfast. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. Um, so, guys, get signed up for that. Uh, and, hey, if you are signed up, think of a friend that you want to invite. Do they need to sign up on the website? I think so. Absolutely. You yep. can just head to the events page for that. In fact, for everything that you heard, you can head to northpoint.org slash churchnews, um, or you can always email us hello at northpoint.org because this has been church news all right again go online you can get connected and find out how you can get involved in the life of the church a couple announcements that i just want to add to that since we're here on our milburn campus is uh, uh, one of the ways that we can engage in our community is uh, is is being involved in in the politics in the church and and, and what's going on in our community and us as a church we we want to have a voice and so while we would never tell you how to vote we believe everybody should vote because that's our privilege 
to get to do that. And so maybe you haven't uh, never registered. And so now um, is your opportunity. There is a booth on the patio where they're going to help you get registered and so that you can be a voice and, uh, and voting in this next election. We want to encourage you to do that. Also on the patio is uh, NBI, Pastor Steve, our founding pastor, last week was up here talking about getting signed up because we're getting ready to kick off in a couple weeks. He's out on a table out on the patio. I encourage you, if you have, you're interested and want some more information, go talk to Pastor Steve or one of the other leaders out there, and they'd love to get you signed up for the next uh, semester of NBI. And then men's uh, uh, booth is out there also. And so online, they talked about registering, but you can get your $5 men's breakfast ticket right on the patio. There's men out there that would love to sell you one of those, and I encourage you to be there uh, in a couple Saturdays uh, as we enjoy uh, some good breakfast and a message and worship together. And so those are things that are happening right there on the patio that we want you to get plugged into before you even leave campus today, and uh, you can do that right after the service. Before Pastor Shane's coming out as we continue on our series of Transformed, and we talk about our mental health, and, and uh, we have some exciting uh, things that he's got planned for us today, but we want you to give a great big smile and a hello to those people that are seated right around you. Well, 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 good morning, everybody. Good to see everyone here. Want to welcome you to North Point. My name is Shane. Want to say happy Sunday. Want to say happy Super Bowl Sunday. Um, you will notice I brought my friend with me uh, who was a North Pointer, Tensor. Many of you know him, uh, Tim Collier. Let's hear it for Tim as he's with us. Now, I, I don't know how many people know this, Tim, but uh, Tim actually played for both the 49ers and Kansas City. Isn't that right? Yes. Yeah. You're right. So you can understand why I wanted Tim to come and join me because it's like real world experience. And we just got to know, bro, who you're rooting for today. <laughs> He's going to put me on the spot again. <laughs> uh, Kansas City was, was good, but I live, I live in California, so I'm rooting for the Niners. <laughs> Oh, man, man, all right. Now, um, we just thought it'd be fun because, of course, it's Super Bowl Sunday and hoping that you're having a great time with friends and everything. Glad you're here. You know how important this is, the Super Bowl. Uh, in fact, you've got the ring. I mean, you, you've been to the Super Bowl. Yes. Yeah, so I see that thing that you're barely holding it up there on your hand. Um, but you know more than anybody what this day means for a lot of people, but here you are in church and uh, just love for you to give a quick testimony. What does Jesus Christ mean to you? Well, I'm in church because God's program, uh, his game, if you will, is more important than any Super Bowl. And we have, uh, we've heard from pastors, believers, that God meets us where we are. But we never seem to finish the statement. Yes, he meets us where we are, but he never leaves us like he found us. With that, I said before, and I'll say it again, that he's the greatest interior decorator to ever <laughs> live. Because when you invite him in, and he starts to clean up your house, rearrange things, kick things out that you don't need. You become a new being. And with that come some difficulties because you live in this world, but you're not of this world. And that opens the door for people to misunderstand you uh, talk about you, put you down, in some cases, knock you down. 
But I'm here to tell you this morning, God won't let you stay down. God has given me a great life. Not that I deserve it, but he gives us what we don't deserve. But he never gives us more than we can handle. My wife, like many other wives, started to move things around in my house, or our house. <laughs> Good catch. Yeah, I caught that because yeah. I know she's listening. Yeah. <laughs> but but she found she found an older Bible that I had put on the shelf. And when she brought it to me, I opened it up and I found something that was intriguing to me. I found a card that said, a man can get to heaven without wealth, without help. He can get there without a famous name, without culture, without learning. But he absolutely, positively, cannot get to heaven without Jesus. Yeah. Wow. People ask me, how do I know this? Because he changed my life. <laughs> you see, I have a God you have a God. We have a father that's never lost a battle. He's never been late. He's never not been kind. He's never not been faithful. And he's never not been God. So for you who are out here today that know him, keep believing. Keep hoping. And you that don't know him, I urge you very strongly to get to know him. Because he will absolutely change your life. Amen. <laughs> Pastor Shane, he asked me to speak on several occasions, but he always wants to wants to give me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> and and, and being, being an ex-professional athlete, you're kind of aware of what's happening around you. And when you use your peripheral vision, I, I see him looking, saying, Tim, <laughs> one minute. <laughs> so I, I just want to say thank you for coming and let me speak. And you listening to an old man, I, I, I have a lot of experiences. God has been really good to me. And when I'm asked to speak, I do so without hesitation. So thank you, guys. Love you, brother. All right. Ah, Tim, love you, man. Amazing guy. Amazing guy. So, uh, so it seems as though we have a lot of Niner fans in here, yeah? All right, so uh, we'll be praying. Hey, speaking of praying, uh, pray for me. <laughs> speaking of praying, I, I want to point something out to you. You know, they mentioned men's breakfast is coming up. Man camp is also coming up. But I caught this picture of a guy praying for his breakfast. Uh, this was at a retreat that I was at. Th this is how a man prays over their meal. You know, you see, the, is the picture up here with me? Yeah, you see, he's got the fork in his hand. He's getting ready. Um, I just want to mention to you guys that uh, I was up at a retreat with a bunch of guys, and there was nothing like it. This was last weekend, and then I was told that we have this man camp coming up. And so I just thought I would encourage you not only to get your tickets for men's breakfast, but go online and uh, make sure that you uh, get registered for man camp. It is going to be quite a time. It's March 8th through 10th. You can read about the details. Sound good? All right. Hey, uh, our theme for this series, Transformed, is Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. So if you would grab your notes... 
Romans chapter 12, verse 2. This week, I want to look at it in the New Living Translation. You'll have your notes here, or you'll see this on the screen. Romans 12, 2 says, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you what? By changing the way you think. Then if God changes the way you think, it says, you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Now, this is quite a statement. You wouldn't believe the number of times people have asked, how do I know God's will for my life? I mean, God has given us a key here to not just transformation, but understanding something about him. And if I can, I just want to sort of thumb, uh, sum up the thesis of this message in one sentence. If I could just say it this way. God is far more interested in changing your mind than he is in changing your circumstances. Let me say that again. God is far more interested in changing your mind than he is changing your circumstances. Now, we want God to change our circumstances. We want God, for example, to take away the pain. We want God to take away the problems or the sorrow or the suffering, uh, the difficulties, the sickness. And I will say, it isn't that God doesn't care. Of course God cares. But God says, what is happening in you is more important than what is happening to you. And that's why I say God is far more interested in changing your mind than he is in changing your circumstances. In fact, God may have you go through some very challenging circumstances just in fact to change your mind. Because God is trying to say, hey, you need to make a course correction here. So today I want to talk to you about why we need to manage our minds and transformation in the mind. Because of all the categories, friends, that we've talked about or are going to be talking about, your mind is the critical issue. And let me give you three reasons why that's true. Write these down right from the start here. Number one, your mind is so important because your thoughts control your life. Your thoughts control your life. Now, what do I mean by your thoughts control your life? Well... Every single action you take begins with a thought. In other words, if you don't think it, you don't do it. And that's true of both the good things and the bad things. If you have good thoughts, that will lead you to do good things. If you have bad thoughts, it's going to lead you to do bad things. Proverbs 4.23 puts it this way. Notice the scripture. It says, be careful then how you, what? Think. Because your life is shaped by your thinking. So I mentioned last weekend I was at a retreat where I caught that cool picture of my friend Jasper, you know, praying over his meal. And we're at this retreat and I'm with this group. In fact, here's a picture of the whole group of guys. Now, you wouldn't believe the stories that I heard. I mean, guys, basically, we spent hours, guys, just sharing where they come from, what their background is. But you wouldn't believe the number of stories where what was said by all of them was, back in the day, I thought this was a good idea. But then they talk about this unraveling um, this unraveling of their life and the destruction that came from doing the things that they thought would be a good idea. People all the time say things like, well, I was just thinking it. And I just want to say, well, be careful about that. Because what the scripture says is your thoughts have life-shaping power. Some of us here today, you've had thoughts planted in your life. Thoughts that were, that were impressed upon you and they've affected your whole way of living. Some of you growing up, maybe you were told you were worthless. Maybe you were told that you were no good or you don't matter. Some of you, maybe along the way somebody told you you're ugly or you weigh too much. You don't have enough hair, whatever it is. And what happened is that thought was like a seed and it got planted and it has shaped everything. Why? Because your thoughts control your life. We see how important this is in the Bible. Now, that leads to the second thing. I just want you to write this down. Why is this so important for transformation? Well, the Bible says that your mind is the battleground for sin. Your mind is a battleground for sin. In fact, it's in your mind that you will either win the battle or lose the battle. Now, Paul, Paul the Apostle, he writes to the church in Rome. This is in the New Testament. And he says some fascinating things. I want for you to notice this as I read this to you. He says, I love to do God's will so far as my new nature is concerned. Now, let me stop there for just a minute. Paul is describing this thing that has happened to him. Let me tell you what happens when a person comes to faith. When a person comes to faith, they, they're, they're a person that says, I believe in God. I've come to believe that he is true. And I've come to believe in the person of Jesus Christ. 
But you see, Christian faith is more than just I believe it exists. There's something more to it than just that. It's sort of like I have this stool here, and of course I could say that I believe that stool exists. And of course you believe that stool exists. There it is. But Christian faith is so much more than I believe that it exists. I mean, I could sit here and tell you how much I believe in that chair till I'm blue in the face, but you know it's not until I actually come here and sit on it that you realize, well, now I'm really trusting it. Now I'm allowing it to carry my weight. And see, what happens in the life of a person that comes to faith in Jesus is they've moved beyond, well, I believe that it's there and I believe it'll hold me. They've actually gone beyond that to the place where they're willing to say, I'm willing to rest on it. And I'm willing to allow it to carry the weight of my life. Well, Paul's describing this. He's saying, because I've done that, I now have this new nature. Because what happens when a person comes to rest in Jesus Christ and rely on him to hold up their life, what happens is they get a new nature because the Holy Spirit comes to live within them. But then he describes this, this thing that's still going on inside him. Notice what he says. He says, uh, but there is something else deep within me in my lower nature that's at war with my mind, this battle that's going on up here, and it wins the fight and it makes me a slave to sin. That, he says, is still within me. Now maybe you can relate to that. Maybe some of you, you've come to rely on Jesus Christ, but you still know that there is this thing going on inside me, this struggle. Now, I can relate to that. He says, in my mind, I want to be God's willing servant, but instead I find myself enslaved to sin. So you see how it is. My new life tells me to do right, but the old nature that is still inside me, it still loves to sin. What a predicament that I'm in. Who will free me from this slavery to my deadly lower nature, he asked. Thank God. It has been done by Jesus Christ. He has set me free. Now, just to help us think through the challenge of this passage, I want you to underline some words in your notes or maybe just circle them. Circle the word war. Circle the word war. And then maybe circle the word fight or underline the word fight. Or here's another one. How about the word slave? Or the word enslaved? Because ultimately what he's saying is, is that there is a very real struggle that we are, we are dealing with in our mind. So I just want to keep encouraging you, friends, as you're looking for transformation, as you're looking for Jesus to really change your life, you've got, i got to keep encouraging you to keep putting your mind under the influence of God. Because there is a battle. The Bible says it in so many ways. We've already touched this one, but look what it says. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, focus your mind on these things. Think about these things. Now, the Bible says this in so many ways. Let me give you another example. Psalm 1, it says, blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. Now again, this is an encouragement to fill your mind with truth, allow Jesus Christ to begin to influence your mind, but then it says there's a promise that happens. The person who is like that, it goes on, is like a tree planted by a stream of water which yields fruit in season, whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. And so many uh, times in the New Testament, the Old Testament, God keeps reminding us of this principle. We have got to put ourselves under the influence of God. Galatians says it this way. Since we live by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit within us, he says, let us intentionally keep in step with the who? With the Spirit. Again, what are we talking about? Keep yourself under the influence of the Lord. Jesus puts it another way. John 15. He says, I'm the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I remain in you, you will bear what? Much fruit. Without me, he says, you can do nothing. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love just as I've kept my Father's commands. Now, 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 I just got to say, the reason he can say that, if you keep my commands, you'll remain in my love, is because the person who's keeping his commands is the person that's doing this. See, they're not just saying, well, I think you can hold me up. They're actually saying, I trust you to hold me up. I believe what you've said. I, Jesus, I believe in what you said more than I believe in what I say. You see the point. Now, ultimately, God is saying he knows something about human beings. And he knows, listen, whatever gets your attention gets you. 
Now, let me give you the third reason why God wants your mind. Write this down. It's because God knows that your mind is the key to peace, and it's the key to happiness. Friends, if I could just put it to you this way. I have learned that there is nothing like walking right with God. Now, a long time ago, I came to Jesus, and I did what I'm encouraging you to do. I relied on him. I put my trust in him. He's holding the weight of my life, and I'm relying on him, and all of those things. But there still is that struggle within me, and I can tell you, the greatest times of peace, the greatest times of joy, the greatest moments of, of, uh, of just living abundantly comes from God, I know that I'm walking the way that you want me to walk. I know that I'm living the way that you want me to live. Sometimes people that are Christians, they believe in Jesus, they've said they're relying on Jesus, but they are actively walking in disobedience to what they know God wants for them. And so their life gets wrecked. And they're troubled. There is nothing like the relief that comes. In fact, there was a book that was written years ago. I think they changed the title. I'll just share the title with you because it says it all. It was a book in, that was called The Utter Relief of Holiness. Let me say the title again. The Utter Relief of Holiness. Because one of the things that the author understood is when you're living outside of God's desire for you, man, it's hard. Man, it creates conflict and stress. This is why Psalm 34 says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people, for those who fear him lack nothing. Or again in Romans, Paul would say it a little different. He'd say, so letting your sinful nature control your mind, that leads to death. But if you let the Holy Spirit control your mind, that will lead you to life. Now, you know what? A person who's not given their mind to the Lord, they're going to have more tension. A person whose mind is not given to the Lord, they're going to have more unnecessary stress. A person whose mind is not given to the Lord is going to have more conflict in their relationships. And this is what God wants us to see. So in our remaining minutes, I just want to give you three choices that you can make. And I want you to start this week. Start making these choices and see how that doesn't doesn't help you with this thing that we call transform transformation you ready write these down here's the first one you've got to make the decision that you will feed your mind the truth you will feed your mind the truth now of course we all understand the importance of nutrition in fact we focused on that last week didn't we talking about eating well by the way uh, pastor ben gave this great message about you know being healthy and of course eating well and sleeping well i kind of felt bad to tell pastor ben that i napped after he preached that message and <laughs> but i gotta tell you then then tuesday night came around and we were all in small groups and we're all sitting around tables but you wouldn't believe the goodies that people baked man i mean on the week that we were we were talking about health i ate more donuts now, everybody knows when we talk about nutrition, good food, good calories will cause you to be better. It will cause you to be stronger. It will cause you to have more energy. <laughs> My little boy, I brought the donuts home because, you know, people, people kept bringing food and they're like, hey, we got these donuts left over, Pastor Shane, and I'm like, get behind me, Satan, you know, and, and, but I go ahead and I take the donuts home. The next day, my son gets up, he's nine years old, he's like, ooh, I want a donut for breakfast. Mom says, you shouldn't have a donut for breakfast because you're going you're gonna to fall asleep like in the middle of the morning because that's what donuts do. You get this quick rush, then you fall apart. He's like, oh, come on, come on. Then he goes, dad, come on. And I got to admit, I'm an old man. I was tired kind of. I gave in. I let him eat the donut. Sure enough, middle of the morning, man. Why? Because you put good calories in, you'll have good results. You put bad calories in, you get bad results. Listen, the same is true of your thought life. Some of you, it's like you struggle so much with issues of sin, and I just want to make the recommendation. Stop watching Game of Thrones. <laughs> You're putting bad stuff in. See, Jesus says, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. How important is it that you start putting the right stuff in your brain? Paul said something this way. He said, the weapons of our warfare, we are in warfare. He says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing how many thoughts? Every thought into captivity 
to obedience to Jesus Christ. Now, it uses a word here. The word is stronghold. You might circle it. Because what is a stronghold? A stronghold is a lie that I choose to believe. In fact, it's a lie that becomes institutionalized. Now, culture has all sorts of lies that have become institutionalized. And they affect the way that we think. But there are also lies that we grow up telling ourselves. And they've become strongholds. For example, growing up there was a lie that I believed that I just could never be good enough. I could never walk with God right. In fact, I used to always feel condemned. In fact, as a child, you wouldn't, I mean, I was tempted to sin so early as a kid. I came to Jesus. I, my parents first went to church probably when I was five or six, somewhere in that age. And I immediately received Jesus. I'll never forget as a five or six-year-old going to the altar and having a pastor share with me the gospel. And I understood it. And I actually experienced a childhood, a fire. Now, those of you who know my story, you know I walked away for a while as a teenager. But I started to experience something very real as a child. But I'll never forget the war within me still to sin. You should have seen me in the second grade in my backyard. I'll never forget the picture. We had this large backyard. There was this giant tree, and I was so tempted to use cuss words in second grade. Oh, I was. I mean, I literally felt this temptation to say, well, I don't want to say it right now. But, <laughs> but man, the, the, the words that were coming to my mind. So I'll never forget, I went behind the oak tree, and I, I, out of gaze that my parents couldn't see me through the window because I didn't want them to see my lips, and I'd say, well, I'm, you know, and I'd say that word. And then I'd get to end and feel kind of good. Ooh, I kind of like the way that feels to say that word. And then I'd say another word. I mean, you wouldn't believe the, I don't know if all kids go through this, but just the temptation to do something kind of bad like that. I won't forget, I was sitting in class and I was preoccupied in class. I must have been in the third grade and I was in a study group and the temptation was hitting me while the teacher was teaching. Say a bad word. So under my breath, I said a word. I'm not going to say the word said a bad word. I'll never, I was so upset because the little girl next to me told on me. I said to the office, to use it. But, but, but what happened early on is I started getting defeated so much by my own temptations that I developed this lie that I will never be good enough for God. Even as a kid, I was walking in enough duplicity of trying to act like I was all together, but really privately struggling with this, that, that I remember the lie that got embedded in me is that God will never be happy with me. So what do I need to do with something like that? I need to go to God's word. And I need to say, God, what is it that you say? Should I believe this lie? And you know, one of the scriptures that the Lord directed me to, I don't have it on your screen, but I have it memorized. I'd like to share it with you. It's Ephesians chapter 2. It's verses 8 and 9. And that scripture says, for it is by grace that we have been saved. Through our faith, it's not of ourselves, but it's a gift of God. It's not of our works, so that no man can boast. And suddenly, filling my mind with the truth, freed me from this stronghold that had plagued me. Why? Because now I'm getting to know God's truth. I love the psalm. He says, direct me in the path of your commands, O Lord, for there I find delight. How I long for your precepts in your righteousness preserve my life. Now, here's the question, friend. Are you filling your mind with truth? I'm not asking anybody to make you feel guilty. I'm just saying, are you putting yourself under the influence of God's care? Psalm 16, you know, talks about doing it at bedtime or at night. I will praise the Lord who counsels me even at night. My heart instructs me. Do you spend time with the Lord at night or maybe in the morning? Another psalm says, in the morning, Lord, you have heard my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and I wait expectantly. Or in the hard times, another psalm, the wicked are waiting to destroy me, but I, God, will ponder your statutes. Isn't that interesting? He's saying even in relationship problems, people are out to get me. Who am I going to turn to? I'm going to turn to God. Wow, that's awesome. Number two, write this down. I need to free my mind from destructive thoughts. Now, that isn't easy. And I say it isn't easy because you have three enemies that are always coming at you that keep you from fulfilling your good intention. Let me give you what those three enemies are. You read about them in scripture over and over again. The first enemy that's warring against you is your old nature. Yeah. It's your old nature. 
That's the warfare that Paul was talking about. Romans 7, 23, he says, but there is this other power within me that's at war with my mind. That power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. So you ever find yourself struggling? That's the battle. Have you ever found yourself knowingly participating in a self-defeating behavior? You know you shouldn't do it. You've done it over and over and over again. You know you're going to regret it, but you go and do it anyway. That's what Paul's talking about. Friends, i got to tell you, the answer to getting over that stuff isn't white-knuckling it. It's not just, oh, I'm going to resist, I'm going to resist. No, the answer is feed yourself the right food. Feed yourself the right stuff. Are you in God's truth? Romans says, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, they set their minds on the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life. Guys, some of us, we're struggling and we're struggling and we're struggling. And then we say, God, why am I going through this? But in reality, we know we're not even putting ourselves under the influence of his care. We're not spending time with him. We're resisting him. We're doing other things. And God's looking at us saying, don't you see I've given you all that you need if you would just come to me? Now, the second enemy in your life, write this down, is Satan. It's Satan. And let's just be clear, Satan can't force you to do anything, but Satan can try and exude influence over you. And he will if you let him. But if you're a Christian, I've got good news for you. The Bible says the one who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Now, Satan can make suggestions to you, and his suggestions are powerful. By the way, let me just remind everybody here, some people think it's like God versus Satan. God versus the devil. And I just got to tell you, that is not at all what it is. It is not God versus the devil. That's like God, that's like an aircraft carrier against an ant. It is not God versus the devil. It is the devil versus you. But God says, greater is he who is in you. You've got the Holy Spirit living in you now. You've entrusted yourself to Jesus. He's living in you. If you would just tap in to the power that he provides. Now, he'll, uh, he'll suggest to you through other people. He'll suggest to you through television. He'll suggest to you through music. So you're watching. Because the scripture says we're not ignorant of his schemes. He schemes. He makes plans. And I'm not unaware of that. So the question is, what are you going to do about it? Now, the third enemy, write this down, is the world's value system. Now, for example, have you noticed over the years, I have, that every advertisement it seems like that we hear about or read about, it encourages you to obey your flesh. It's like growing up, I heard these. It's like, you deserve a what today? You deserve a break today or have it your way or we do it all for you. It's all for you. Sprite used to have this advertisement that would say, obey your thirst. And it's like every advertisement tells you that Boy, you have to do this. You have to feed the beast, the animal. And that is the world's value system. And the world's going to tell you that you are the most important. Nothing matters more than you. You are number one. But you get to decide, what am I going to do with that? Is that true? And I'd say, are you filling your mind with truth? Do you go to God's word? For example, the thought comes in, I could never forgive myself. Maybe that's happening for you today. I could never forgive myself. I just want to ask you, is that true? And where are you going to go to find out if that's true? Go to God. Look to his word. Here's another one. I will never amount to anything or I will never overcome this thing. Is that true? I just want to say to you, don't believe it. Reject it. Friends, listen to me. Satan is the father of lies. But Jesus says, I am the truth, and the truth sets you free. So, who are we listening to? Number three, write this down. I must focus my mind on the right things. Because again, it's not just about what we take out, but it's about what we put in. And God says, man, I want you to focus on the right stuff. So, 
He says, I want you to train your mind and start focusing on the things that will bring life change. Again, look at what the scripture says. Our theme verse, it says, when you begin to do this and train your mind, you will learn God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So let me just give you, before we're done, I'm just going to say these things and then we'll be done. I'll lead us in prayer. Three things that I want you this week to be focused on. Practice thinking on these things. You ready? Number one, here's what I'd encourage you to do. Be thinking about Jesus. Be thinking about Jesus. You've heard that old cliche, you become what you think about the most. And I'm just going to say, if you start thinking about Jesus the most, guess what? You're going to become like Jesus. You keep your mind fixed on Jesus Christ. I mean, the scripture encourages us to do this. Hebrews says we must focus on Jesus, the source and the goal of our faith. Think about Jesus who endured opposition to sinners or opposition from sinners so that you don't become tired. He literally says the key to your endurance is to think, focus your mind on Jesus and do that. And friends, I just got to say, some of you, it's like when you feel like you're ready to give up, I want to say, start thinking about Jesus. When you feel like you want to throw in the towel, meditate on Jesus. Walk with Jesus. Give yourself to his influence. I met with a man, oh, I don't know. It was at the request of his wife. Um, they, were getting re they were getting ready to declare a divorce, call it quit. She did not want a divorce. So she just asked if I would consider talking to her husband. And I said, well, I need you to speak to your husband and see if he would like to do that. And, but he did, and so we sat together. And, you know, in that conversation we sat together for about an hour, I could not convince him that divorce wasn't the best option at this stage. After I listened to the whole story and he told me everything, I couldn't convince him of that. But you know what I did? I said, listen, would you be willing to do this? Would you just be willing, before you make any decision, would you start spending daily time with God and go to God and ask him, God, what do you want me to do? It's clear that this man, he felt justified. I said, it's clear that you feel justified. It's clear that you feel like you have the right. He was harboring all sorts of angry, bitter thoughts and feelings toward his spouse that he had carried for years. And so he felt very justified in what he was doing. But I said, listen, before you rely on your judgment, would you do me the favor of just spend time with God every day? He looked at me, he said, I won't do that. Now, why do you think he's so afraid to do that? What makes a person so afraid to say, God, what would you have me to do? Sat with another guy, same kind of situation. He, had, he was in multiple affairs. I mean, it was a series of affairs over and over and over again. His wife finally learned the truth, and he told his wife, he said, I'm not going to give it up. I'm going to keep doing this thing, and I'm going to keep sleeping with who I want to sleep with. He had, a, he had that kind of an attitude about it. And he said he was a Christian. I literally sat over coffee with him, and I said, so you believe in Jesus Christ. You believe that God's a moral being, and he's made you a moral creature, but, and you think you're okay to still make this decision. Yeah, I do. Can I just, I said, can I just ask you a question? Would you just do me a favor? Would you just start spending some time with the Lord daily in worship? I'm going to send you my playlist, and the only thing I'm asking you to do is, would you just take 15 minutes a day and start worshiping the Lord? Tears welled up in his eyes. He said, I will not do that. He, he's weeping as he's telling me he will not put himself under the influence of the Lord. Here is life's falling apart. Oh, friends, who are you looking to? You've got to be thinking about Jesus. Write this down. You've got to be thinking about others. <laughs> Philippians 2.4 puts it this way. Each fixing his attention, not simply on his own interests, but on the interests of others. Listen, the, you know when maturity is reached? It's when you realize life is not about you. Do you know the one person who life is really all about is Jesus Christ. And even Jesus decided, I'm not going to think of myself. I'm going to think of others. I mean, the one person who can say, life really is all about me. And he decides, I'm not going to live for me. I'm going to live for others. Now, do you know how counterculture that is? Because everything in this world is teaching you to think about yourself. I've got to do what's best for me. I'm looking out for number one. And I could go on. There's a whole list of sayings that you've been, that you have grown up thinking about. And I want to tell you something. An attitude like that is going to lead you to an unhealthy life. 
an attitude like that is going to lead you to an unhappy life. But when you start to grow up and realize life isn't about me at all, oh, now you'll tap into happiness. So you think about Jesus, you think about others, and then finally, write this down, last thing before I pray. You begin to dwell about and think about the kingdom of God. God, I live for your kingdom. When Jesus came and walked on this earth, he came preaching, the kingdom of God is here. Do you know, there's a phrase we've already brought you to several times. It's our theme for the year. Uh, many of you have bought, bought t-shirts with this on it, if you just go to this visual for me. But the theme is called, don't waste your what? You know, this theme is really all about stewardship. It's all about God has given you one life and one day you and I are going to stand before him and he's going to say, what did you do with what I gave you? Don't waste it. And I'm going to tell you, when you begin to focus your life on the kingdom of God, I guarantee you won't waste it. Because if you make the kingdom of God your focus, God says he'll allow everything else to fall into place. In fact, I love the Sermon on the Mountain where Jesus is preaching. You know, he's saying, listen, Stop caring about all the things of the world. Don't you see that these things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers? You're not an unbeliever. But look at what he says. He says, if you seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, he's going to give you everything else that you need. Colossians 3, 2, set your heart on things that are in heaven. Keep your mind fixed on things there. Friends, God wants to use your life. Think about that. What an honor. God, the creator of the universe, wants to use you. Gosh, what a privilege. He says, what no eye has seen, nor ear has heard, what no mind can conceive. Man, these are the things that God has prepared for those who love him. And you begin to think about that and realize, Lord, I don't want to waste it. I want to set my mind on you. I want to be used for the kingdom of God. And when you start thinking about that, boy, all of the problems, all of the destructive thoughts, all of the dominating thoughts, they start to melt away as you begin to focus on him. Don't copy the behaviors of this world. Let's read this together. Here we go. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Father, thank you for these men and women. Thank you that they're here and thank you that we can seek you. We ask, oh Jesus, that you would meet us right where we are. Cleanse our minds. And help our minds to be fixed on you. We love you so much, Lord. We give ourselves to you. Maybe there's someone here today that has never trusted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I just want to invite you. You can do that. In fact, if I could just have everybody repeat this prayer after me. Just pray this with me. Jesus, I give you my life. I want to trust you. Forgive me of my sin and come into my life and change me. Make me new. Thank you for your good work. Thank you that I can trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. We really just hope that this message, this the beginning of this six-week series, just made an impact on you. If you have questions about anything, um, that we said today. We sure would love to answer those questions for you. And then don't forget, this is a time of communion. And so um, I just want to encourage you to grab what you have around and spend a moment at the end um, of this video to just pray. Um, pray about the ways that the Lord wants to use you. Pray about the ways that the Lord um, wants to just call out things in you that are things maybe to work on or be aware of. Um, that's really what communion is about, is committing ourselves back to Jesus, um, putting ourselves in his hands to be used by him. And so I want to encourage you in that. If you've made a decision for Jesus, we are so excited about that. We want to know about it. We want to walk this with you. You can just click the button. You can start a prayer with one of us. We would love to hear from you. Remember, you can stay connected with us throughout the week. Um, we are live with CR on Wednesday evenings and then early morning prayer on Tuesday and Thursday mornings. Uh, we love you guys. We hope this time has been good for you. Don't forget to step into a transition.
transformed group, we sure would love to have you. Go and make it a great rest of your day.